Hi, I am Varun Joshi and welcome to day 18 of our Certified Kubernetes Administrator 2025 course. In the last two sessions, we explored taints and tolerations and node affinity. Two powerful ways to control where Kubernetes schedules pods. But you might be wondering, why do we need node affinity when taints and tolerations already exist? and vice versa. Today, we'll compare these two mechanisms to understand their strengths and limitations. We'll also learn why using them together gives us the most control over pod placement. So we have this diagram with us. We have two nodes, node one and node two. Node one has attained storage is equal to SSD with the effect no schedule and it has one custom label storage is equal to sst and then there are default labels that are in this node default labels are something that kubernetes will add by itself if you run kubectl get nodes hyphen hyphen show labels you will see that these are the labels that are added by kubernetes itself if you go to cloud providers you would see that they will have their own labels you would see a region label availability zone label the machine type label so these depend on where you are deploying your kubernetes cluster let's get back and then we have node 2 that does not have any tain and it has also one custom label that is storage is equal to hdd and then there are default labels as well in this node 2 we have three pods here pod 1 2 and 3 pod 1 has just tolerations defined pod 2 just has the affinity defined pod 3 doesn't have either of these firstly taints and tolerations what do they do you apply taints to your nodes and the tainted nodes will only accept the pods that have matching tolerations what we saw in day 16 was the effect for the taint can be both hard and soft hard is your no schedule and no execute wherein if the pods do not have tolerations they won't run on these nodes soft restriction is provided by the effect prefer no schedule wherein the pods that do not have tolerations can also run on this node if the scheduler cannot schedule those pods or pod onto the other available nodes then you have a node affinity in node affinity you label your nodes and then the pods that have affinity defined will only be scheduled onto the nodes that have the appropriate labels with node affinity we also saw that there are two kinds of restrictions there is a hard restriction and then there is a soft restriction if you use required during scheduling then the pod that has affinity defined will only run on to the nodes that have appropriate labels if you have preferred during scheduling then the pods will prefer to run on the nodes that have labels but can also run onto the nodes that do not have the asked labels the pod will prefer matching nodes but can be scheduled elsewhere if needed this is what we saw now let's go back to the diagram and see where these pods will be placed if i talk about pod 1 pod 1 can be scheduled on node 1 because it has a matching toleration second it can also be scheduled onto node 2 why node 2 because even if the pod has tolerations defined it can still be scheduled onto an untainted node for this example let's say this pod gets scheduled onto node 2 then we have pod 2 pod 2 has affinity defined and that affinity has a hard rule that is required during scheduling this is why pod 2 can be scheduled only onto node 1 then there is 
pod 3 where can we schedule pod 3 pod 3 for sure cannot be scheduled onto node 1 node 1 has a taint and that taint is strict in nature it says no schedule so pod 3 for sure cannot be scheduled onto node 1 because pod 3 does not have a matching toleration for node 1's taint then we have node 2 pod 3 does not have any tolerations or affinity defined hence pod 3 can be scheduled onto node 2 only this looks fine but there are certain problems with this approach here are the problems with this approach first problem is taints and tolerations pods with tolerations can still land on untainted nodes i appropriately have defined tolerations in pod 1 and ideally pod 1 should land onto node 1 because node 1 has the taint that has a matching toleration for pod 1 why is pod 1 running in node 2 and i want you to understand one thing in pod 1 i have defined the toleration for storage is equal to sst what if the application running on pod 1 requires sst and we are running it on a node that has hdd that is not right and another is maybe node 2 is associated with a different project let's say project b however pod 1 is part of project a is it fair for pod 1 to use project b's resources no it is not fair so we want strict control over pod placement and here we are answering the question that only taints and tolerations will not help us to have predictable pod placement hence we must use something else as well and that something else is node affinity before we discuss the solution for this let's talk about the second problem node affinity pods that do not have affinity defined can land on a labeled node i have labeled both these nodes with storage is equal to hdd and storage is equal to sst pod 3 we know cannot land onto node 1 because pod 3 does not have the matching toleration hence pod 3 is scheduled onto node 2 this is a problem anything that do not have affinity defined can run on my labeled nodes i don't want that to happen so let's see how did we fix these problems the solution to these is use node affinity and tolerations in conjunction let's see what is happening now we have pod 1 and pod 1 is defining both tolerations and affinity so when scheduler wants to schedule pod 1 it will see first the toleration should be storage should be equal to ssd and it is strict and storage is equal to ssd is available on node 1 the second rule is affinity rule the affinity rule says this pod 1 should only be scheduled onto a node that has a label storage is equal to ssd and in here node 1 is the appropriate node that can run pod 1 let's talk about pod 2 pod 2 in our previous diagram had only defined affinity but in this case pod 2 has defined both tolerations and affinity so pod 2 will also follow pod 1's footsteps and be scheduled onto node 1 here are both my pods running onto node 1 if you see previously our pod that had tolerations was scheduled onto node 2 but this time since my pod 1 has defined both tolerations and node affinity it is scheduled onto the node that has the taint and also has the labels that satisfies the node affinity condition for pod 1. Let's talk about pod 3. Pod 3 definitely cannot be scheduled onto node 1 because it does not have the matching tolerations. Hence, pod 3 will be scheduled onto node 2. But the problem remains the same. I don't want my pod to run onto a node that is not appropriate for it. And I don't know whether node 2 is appropriate for pod 3 or not because maybe pod 3 requires SSD like we discussed before. Maybe pod 3 belongs to a project that does not own node 2. Then why should pod 3 
run on this node to prohibit pod 3 from running on to any of these nodes if i add a taint on to node 2 for example if i add this taint just give me a moment if i add this taint storage is equal to to hdd here then i can be certain that this pod will remain unscheduled another thing what i can do is what i can ensure is all my pods have both tolerations and affinity defined so that i can have full control over pod placement i hope if there was any confusion between taints and tolerations and node affinity it is crystal clear now now another question that might come to your mind is why can't i just use node affinity i mean if you see here in our example one if your pod has node affinity defined it will only land onto the node that has the affinity rule then why do i need taints and tolerations to begin with the answer to that is the same what happens to pod 3 that does not define any node affinity hence it is important that you use both taints and tolerations and node affinity to have predictable placement of your pods and this gives you full control as an administrator where which pods will run and as we have discussed before when you are dealing with a kubernetes cluster you could be deploying 15 20 40 50 70 applications onto a same cluster and in that case you want proper segregation between your workloads and a cluster can have 100 200 400 many nodes not each node will have same configuration some apps might require gpu some might not require gpu hence it is imperative that you have full control over where your pods will run you want to ensure that pods of project a do not run onto the nodes that are designed for project b and there are several combinations departments workloads and the list goes on i think i've covered everything that i wanted to cover that wraps up day 18 Today, we explored the differences between taints and tolerations versus node affinity, saw how each work independently and why using them together gives us complete control over scheduling. In the next session, that is day 19, we'll move beyond scheduling and talk about requests and limits, a crucial topic for managing resource allocation in Kubernetes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section and I will reply. If this helped, do consider liking, sharing and subscribing. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you very much.